It's time for the Creative Town Hall here on Studio Live today, tonight, or today, or this morning. Wherever you are in the world, I hope you're having a good one. I've got a very special guest because we're going to be talking about the plethora of amazing live streaming shows where people are showcasing other people's music. We've got an amazing community here. There are a heap of people doing the sort of thing that I do on Your Music Live, including tonight's special guest, all the way from Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. Please welcome Rockin' Ronnie Ward. Ron, what is going down, my friend? Hello, everybody. What's up? Hi, Pete. <laughs> no Hello, wig Pete's tonight, man. audience. No wigs. I don't know. I was a bit disappointed. I'm like, uh, on your show, you're normally rocking the wigs, and we're, we're wig free tonight. We get to see your real, uh, your real locks there, man. 60 minutes is a long time, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> there could be changes things could be happening here oh, so it's great to have you here you, you haven't been on the show for uh we, we were trying to work do the math before and it was uh, episode 35 you were last on this show which is a good six months ago so it's been a while a lot's happened in the world a lot's happened in your world for the few folks who don't know who you are and what you do ron why don't you give us a little like a 30 second uh, ron ward uh homegrown indie live introduction okay i'm the host over at Homegrown Indie Music Live, primarily on YouTube uh, here. And uh, you can check out the channel, right? Uh, in the details to Pete's stream here. Um, I do live streams weekly about people's music. We play people's music, you know, home recorded tracks and talk about those and I do four or five of those a week right now yeah so that's there, basically there, there is my always gig. a Ron show on every, every time I turn on the internet there's a there's a there's a homegrown indie live show happening and it's a All cool right. thing so I was, I was gonna ask you that actually like how many shows it is now so you're up to four four or five a week is that what you right you if I do if I do like um, an artist spotlight then it's five but most mm. of the time it's four but this week it was three too because i do a show with real talk radio those guys over there at that group uh but both of their anchor men were down one wow. with you know a, a virus and one's computer was killed oh. so <laughs> so i just let that one go you know this that yeah. week but uh the other three, which are Ron Reddy, yep. GBU Live, and Indie Live, those are my main ones. Very cool. And uh, and for, for those of you, many of you I know know Ron from the GarageBand Users Facebook group because both Ron and I are GarageBand users. We're both part of the uh, cool moderator team that we have over there. And when I say cool, I mean all the other dudes are cool that uh, help run that group the create record release group rod's also part of that and uh i've known ron for oh it's got to be th coming up three years man it's been it's been a long time it's been a long Pretty journey close. that we've been going through mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh you started sharing your love of sharing other people's music through a, a show you did that um now, I, I, I'm not going to claim that I named it, but uh, you, you were doing a garage band show where you were showing people's garage band songs. And GBU Live, I believe, is the, was, was the, the term that you started using and started doing way back in the Facebook days. Is that, is that the impetus? Was that the very first sort of time you started sharing other people's music online? Well, the first time I remember getting a bug for it was when I watched Garage Band weekly with you and Steve Mara where all you guys could do was mm -hmm. talk about a, a song and describe it because you couldn't play it yet <laughs> remember those days oh do I remember those days and then so like Steve had to go you know to his window cleaning gig <laughs> and you said can you come on once and so I got up early and we yeah. did that I don't think we you know we were playing songs yet no. and um that was it when, that once was that it. first one i did and you were just streaming straight on facebook yeah still straight from and the then phones. you know things yeah. moved very quickly from that but that was the impetus and then so then i started doing a show regularly in gbu you know facebook group and mm. 
you said, why don't you do GBU Live? You named it, and then uh, so the rest is history, <laughs> baby. Well, I didn't want to claim it because I couldn't remember if it was actually. I, I hate it when people oh, are just yeah. like, oh, yeah, I totally named that. And then you did? Like, no, no, man. I, I, I think you, you can own that one. I'll. <laughs> And I thank you for it because it's a good name. <laughs> it, it's see when I say it, it doesn't sound quite right. But when when Ron says GBU Live, there's just something about that uh, uh, that, uh, that that just it just it just sounds right. It is cool. Uh, should we say hello to the cool folks who are here? Speaking of cool folks, we've got some great people here live. Let's say get a do a quick roll call here. We've got Armored Anvil who was here nice and early. Alex Bacchus over there in Germany had to. Uh, Toodle off. Uh, Alex. Couldn't, couldn't make the show. Bath Tech Australia. The one and only Jade Star. And Russ. They came at the same time. Uh, hang on. Jade let me, let me, let me try that again. They came at the same time. Um, because uh, they're working on an album release at the moment, which we'll talk about later. There's a, that, we call that a tease in the biz. We'll tell you oh, more yeah. about that later. Uh, Gregory O'Sullivan is here out of Melbourne Town as well. Hello to you. Uh, who else have I seen here? I'm scrolling down. Sing along. ES. Hello. The product detective. Good day to you. The truth about unicorns from Bonnie. Scotland. Uh, I won't do my accents. I've been banned from accents, so I'll uh, I'll try not to uh, to uh, insult anyone. Papa Tom Carrera, someone who I know you've played on your show, Papa and I played as well here. Uh, we've got Gwei Gwei Garu, one of the OGs Gwei Gwei. from the, uh, the Garage Band Users Group. I uh, hope you're doing <laughs> yeah. well. Kionra from uh, the west of Australia here. I hope you are doing well. Marcus Cannell, the king of melodic metal instrumentals, uh, rocking there. The one and only Colin Stanton out of Canada. We got we got people all around the world. Colin, here today, right? it's all right happening on. here. I uh, hope everyone is well. If you do have uh, questions or comments, we will be checking in with the chat as we go through. All you need to do if you've got a question for Ron is to type "question" in front of your comment, and I'll throw those Ron's way. Let's talk about uh, different things because. Um, one of the things that happened early on, because you did start on Facebook, and we're talking, again, if you're just joining us here, just to reset, we're talking about sharing other people's music and the fact that Ron and I are both very passionate about growing independent music, about promoting independent artists and musicians, and about displaying and showcasing that music online. So when you first started GBU Live, it was on Facebook in the Facebook group, and you're not doing that anymore. Do you want to uh, tell the uh, the abbreviated story of what happened there mm, and why mm. why you're on YouTube now and uh, moving from Facebook to YouTube? Right. Well, once I started using Ecamm to stream, after having gone through a journey with uh StreamYard, which was a cool thing to use. And then, but I really felt like I was getting serious in my streaming, whatever, uh, my need to do it or my ability to do it. Yeah. And Facebook was okay with that, you know, but mm. they had so many restrictions, man. And uh, copyright ID, uh, yeah. being the content ID, being the primary one. And actually, uh, they blocked the show several times. <laughs> they stopped the streams, mm. and they sent their bots after that uh, stream of mine that I was doing <laughs> and then shut me off from streaming. Now, I was banned from streaming for a couple of different times. Mm. And all I was trying to do was get the music out there you know yeah. and but you know that's i don't want to go too far down that road because it's a really <laughs> long story but so yeah. having seen p and jade work on youtube and mm -hmm. having talked to them you know uh i said and i already had a youtube presence with saigon slick and the boss and bard and strange machine so I made all of the, you know, uh, a couple of Facebook, excuse me, YouTube pages, mm -hmm. channels, whatever. Yep. I started it up. And so yeah. that's why I switched was because of the restrictions over there uh, in YouTube. Now, you have to play by the rules, uh, or excuse me, f Facebook restrictions, mm -hmm. Agent Smith, bad, <laughs> YouTube, good. I think YouTube's a lot better place to work. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's, and it is. It's, and I remember Jade and myself and others encouraging you to get over to YouTube because, again, there's a, there's a couple of reasons. In the Facebook group, obviously, you can only stream to that private group, which uh, has its advantages for people that maybe don't want to share their stuff publicly, right. but has a lot of disadvantages around mm-hmm. some of the copyright and the content stuff you have with Facebook. Mm-hmm. And then YouTube is just so ubiquitous these days. Like everyone, everybody's on YouTube. YouTube's like email. Like everyone's got access to it and uh, not too many people. A lot of people say, nah, I don't do Facebook. Nah, I don't like Instagram. I don't like Twitter. But yeah, when it comes to YouTube, uh, I think people people are, people are dig it and uh, it is easier to write. And we will talk about some of the uh, the challenges of, of getting, you know, the rights to play people's songs and how you manage that and how you how you do navigate the, the copyright because it still happens on, on our shows. We still do get content ID claims and we'll, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that later as we go. Um, are, are you, is, that a, is that code? Are you t- tapping some Morse code in there or can you not hear me? <laughs> <laughs> you got some uh you got some alarms going off there Ron. It's all happening at Ron's end. <laughs> yeah, I got no can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah, I've got you Hello. loud and clear. You want, mm. I can't hear you, so maybe I should mm. Maybe I should odd. pop out of the stream and pop back in. Yeah, give that a go. See see how that goes cuz I've got you loud and clear and if uh, if folks watching can uh, can let me know if uh, if you can hear myself and you can hear Ron. Uh, hopefully it's just a little uh, little glitch. We'll jump in and we'll talk about it. We'll talk about that submission managing process in a moment because it is it can be a challenge trying to trying to get those submissions in and uh, using different platforms and using different things. So uh, we'll bring Ron back on in. Can you hear me, my friend? I can Thank now. You. Suddenly it was just static for a wow. there you minute go. or so. That's uh, that's not cool. We, hopefully we can avoid that in the future. Marcus Cannell can hear you both. So, uh, yeah, I could I could hear you loud and clear, and uh, but, yeah, obviously oh. uh, your audio cut out going your way, and Colin said mm-hmm. can hear you both fine. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll, 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 we'll proceed, and we'll see how we go uh, from here. We've got a couple of questions here from The Truth About Unicorns, and we're going to talk about song submissions here. So uh, when we submit our songs to your channel, what platforms or apps is it easier for you to stream from or does it matter? So what do you prefer when people, because we, we do, we play streaming, and I think you've got the same opinion as I do, which is please don't send us files. Please don't send us things we have to mm. download and play. Right. We want something that is streamable. So right. what is your preference? What do you prefer to, to get? Streamable links for sure, like yeah. you said. And I'm okay with anything that streams well. Right? And yeah. I have a decent internet connection over here, so I mean, I can do just things like slaps or um, SoundCloud, I do quite a lot. Of course, YouTube. And um, yeah, Spotify. I don't like t- very much to uh, use uh, SongWhip, right? Because it sometimes mm. I punch something and I haven't signed in on my browser and it holds up the show, you know, something <laughs> yeah. like that. I'd rather have a direct link, but otherwise, as far as platforms, yeah, mm. streaming, streaming. Whatever you can stream with, yeah. And look, it is, it is kind of cool. I'm, I'm kind of the same. It is nice to get a YouTube uh, video, so it is good because we well, right. obviously we're playing the audio, but having a cool video uh, like a like a tux t-shirt or something like that. Although does tux t-shirt have a video? That may be one that doesn't, but you've you've definitely done some very. I cool have videos. one of those distro kid videos. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Little visualization, but uh, mm-hmm. Saigon Slick and the Boston Bar definitely have some uh, some great videos. Um, the uh, the the Godzilla is it? Hang on, gotta get it right. Let let Godzilla free. Set Godzilla free. Set Godzilla free. Set Godzilla free. Set Godzilla free. Right. On. I can never remember the name of the tune, but it's one of my favorite. Uh, and we didn't really talk about that, but Ron, as well as promoting other folks' music, uh, you do play your own music with with Brian uh, out of Boston. So uh, our, our friend Brian is the Boston Bard, and uh, Ron is Saigon Slick. And for those studying geography, Saigon is what uh, Ho Chi Minh City used to be called. So uh, Ron out of Saigon. And I, I think when you were on Jade's channel, and I think when we've chatted in the past, we've told the story of your past, because people are probably listening to you going... <laughs> You don't really have much of a Vietnamese accent there, Ron, and uh, there's something something a bit strange there. Oh, we've lost Ron again. 
<laughs> we'll jump to the next question and we'll cue this one up uh, while we wait for Ron to come on back. Uh, so what social media platforms do you think are most effective for promoting your songs? We'll bring, uh, we'll bring Rock and Ron back into the stream here. So and, uh, ask that. <laughs> I, yeah, first started knowing Pete basically because uh, we were in the same group on Facebook together. And then this guy in the group, he was brand new and so was I, came up and said, I'm looking for somebody to do vocals on my guitar cover of Comfortably Numb. And so Pete goes, well, why don't you ask Ron? Because he heard me sing something. And <laughs> that was the first time I met Brian Bigler, the Boston Bard. And we never stopped recording together since then, even until now. It's been about three years. Yeah. <laughs> Again, cool. Pete, right? <laughs> I'm the matchmaker. I'm, I'm, I'm doing all the work here to make sure it happens. Uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll put a link here, actually, to... Uh, to I've got to put it in here. Saigon Slick and the boss. You've got the longest band name in history, man. It's I the know, hardest man. thing to find there. I did uh, it with the uh, app. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Yeah. That's cool. So uh, th there you are. I'll, I'll throw this in the chat here. Oh, folks, thanks. Uh, yeah, to, thank to, you. To go and check out. Because cool. it's some... Really cool music. And, uh, we and, get a lot of good content on that channel. Yeah, uh, exactly. And, and uh, not to mention your the, the, the song we are talking about before, Tuck's T-Shirt. That's your uh, your new side project, Strange Machine, I believe. Uh, right, Strange Machine yeah. Records, uh, where I do my solo projects, right? Like yeah. Strange Machine and uh, Pam, which was the first one. Um, and... In music, I've also been writing and performing my new originals on the shows for the past couple of weeks. And I'm looking at releasing an EP of those songs. Very cool. Uh, in collaboration with some of the folks in the community who have... Um, volunteered to like do the tracks wow that is so cool. yeah <laughs> so it's easy for me man and still great so that's what's uh going on most recently with music it uh related yeah. to rock and ron <laughs> well that is cool and it, it probably relates to this question as well uh, a follow-up question what social media platforms do you think are most effective for promoting your song so uh, and we were going to talk about promotion of our live shows but in terms of music how do you go about sharing and promoting your music with folks online well from um saigon slick and the boss and bard uh viewpoint i mean uh we're on Spotify. We try to get on as many playlists as we can. Mm. And, you know, of course we post our stuff on uh, our own YouTube channels. I mean, I think YouTube is the best thing that we had going as Saigon Slick and a Boss and Bard because mm. we were a video-based band, Yeah. right? Yeah. Now, I don't want to say were, but you know, Brian's <laughs> just had a child, and I was taking a. I've been taking a songwriting break for solo, although the band's still good. He's just mm. had a baby boy there, so uh, I'm doing this stuff. What were we talking about? <laughs> yeah, promo <laughs> promoting your music, which uh, which is something you've done well because everyone YouTube, everyone knows YouTube. about YouTube. YouTube. Do yeah. your thing. Uh, let's take it as some other folks who've uh, rocked on in here. Mr. Hugh Colwell is uh, someone who we both know well. And uh, Maze End Music Lab is a uh, cool dude uh, that we know well. Right. Uh, yes. And uh, named after a Beatles song. Or so they say. So they say. Oh, yeah. Uh, so managing submissions. How the heck do you... doing? four to five shows a week playing other people's music. How are you not pulling your hair out trying to work out who's submitting what, what you're playing each week? How, how, how do you actually get something like the master list actually together and not lose your mind trying to do all that? I got one word for you. Google Sheets. 
Oh, it's two it. words, man. The secret <laughs> is Google Sheets. Spreadsheets, man. Man, it's like my corporate life all over again. So Well, it was for me, too, because I used to poke right. in databases and stuff, you know, yeah. on <laughs> Excel or whatever, you know. And, um, yeah, so I learned how to do a little bit of that. And it just comes back, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Some of those things that you didn't think you ever wanted to do again <laughs> do come in handy, you know? So that's how I do it. I just make... Um, compiling the list is, uh, is, you know, challenging. That's It's yeah. probably the most tedious thing I do is actually putting the list together. Mm. Because even though I use Google sheets and it's cool and i can see them in my browser at any time i make a different spreadsheet for each um show right yeah and then i but i still have to go to my email homegrown indie live at gmail.com and take people's submissions that's how that's my primary way is uh, yeah. through email and yeah. um and also through the facebook groups you know they post on those um uh, yeah. announcements that i make and so it's a, a bit of a, a hustle for me to go around and get all of those uh, it's like i'm running my traps right i gotta go check out all these places where people might have music yeah and then then people are sending messaging you and things like that so i'm small enough still where i can do that yeah. you know i don't have th thousands and thousands of potential people watching me you know yet so i can uh, t talk directly with people it's great i answer emails and things like that as much as i can right mm -hmm. and then um but being realistic about it at some point if it continued yeah. to grow at about the rate that it is <laughs> you know yeah. Uh, then you have to see something else because you're only one guy. But I really love to start it off this way, w mm. talking directly to folks about their music, knowing as much as I can about every track they do. If they like yeah. to be on the show, because you end up, you know how it is, you end up following yeah. people's musical careers. Totally. Yeah. And, I, and, and it is great. And uh, as many folks know, I do a similar show only once a week. I only do one show a week and it's only two hours. So I see, I see folks like Ron and Thomas Christ and uh, Metalhead Hippie doing these multi, multi hour shows. I'm like, I don't know how you do it. And then the number of songs you collate and play. And, and yeah, when I started out, I just used email as well. And it was good. It was nice and intimate. Like right. you say, you can have those conversations. But right. yeah, there was just, it only took a few of those where you have a back and forth and they're like, oh, here's my my link i'm like okay what's the name of the song and they're like oh yeah, mm. actually here's an updated link actually i took that link down and here's the third link that's got better audio and it's like <laughs> yeah. man and you, you yeah. multiply that by 20 30 40 50 tracks uh it can be challenging so uh yes. yeah I th I, the good news though is ron i went to google forms which uh, goes straight mm -hmm. into google sheets so i use right. the exact same thing i just make <laughs> google forms do all the work people submit it at the website and then it all just goes into google form which right. i just dump into google sheets and then i can access all the songs from there so right there is there are easier so cool ways. man well but i mean do you get a chance to interact with the artists then through you know I mean, yeah not, not a lot and and that was that was probably the challenge going from email into that was a challenge and what i'm doing now is and again just the scalability of it i have to do it as a bulk thing so i'll just send out a bcc like a blind copy mm -hmm. email to everyone who's going to be on the show and say hey guess what uh, your music live's happening tomorrow and you're on the playlist and that's about the best that i can do but it does make it hard because yeah if there's issues with it uh, if, if uh, the file's wrong or if they've got an incorrect link i basically just on the show each week i just say hey if you send me something and it's not there and you don't get played, uh, you might have to resubmit it. But uh, then, of course, right. you get people resubmitting every week or submitting four or five right. songs a week, and it does make it challenging to do that too. So, yeah, ideally, I hire an assistant. <laughs> but again, I'm not, right. I'm not big enough for that. And uh, it, it would be good to have someone that could be, mm. oh, yes, I'll just curate these playlists. And here you go, Pete. All you have to do is do the thing. But... Uh, yeah, you and I both have the same challenge that we are the everything. You're the you're the admin. You're the reception. You're the uh, you're the music collator. You're the IT support. Uh, you're the marketing department, and you're the talent. Right. You're, you're everything. You're the graphic designer. 
exactly. Which, which by the way, uh, your, your graphic design is pretty amazing. If you take a look at some of the things Ron does, if you take a look at Saigon Slick and the Boston Bar there, if you take a look at Ron's uh, banners and his logos and things, the I meant to I meant to be where I'm, I meant to wear my Garage Band users T-shirt because <laughs> the official Garage Band users T-shirt that uh, over I think about fifty people own those now. Ron was uh, was designed uh, by uh, Rock and Ronnie Ward. So uh, if any of you that have bought them, uh, and by the way, if you're a Garage Band user, yeah, send me an email or drop a comment. We'll tell you how you can get a T-shirt. We we sell them at a cost price because Ron just designed this logo and said, hey, this is a cool logo. And I'm like, I need to put that on a T-shirt. So we, we threw it up on <laughs> Teespring. Zero profit from it. It's all just at cost price. But uh, a heap of people got them a T-shirt. and uh, They look pretty cool. I like mine. It's almost, I've always worn it so much it's faded. I need a new one. It's classic. Uh, it's classic, you know. It's, it's amazing. I love it. Uh, hello to, uh, to who did I see? We saw Joe Glenn, the one and only Joe Glenn here. Hello, uh, we've Joe. We've got Rook Alavanda. Hello. Sneaking uh, in on headphones. Mr. Dan Eckberg, someone whose music I know that you and I have both played in the past yes. as well. Uh, and Black Covers, our friend Ingo over at Black Covers is here as well. So hello to all of those folks. I hope you're all doing well. Uh, let's talk about uh, something that we're clearly struggling with here tonight, which is <laughs> when you've got streaming and you've got audio, managing the quality of audio is is a tough thing. So as, as most people know, I mean, Ron uses, we, we use different platforms. We'll talk about that in a moment. Ron, uh, I, I use StreamYard here, uh, and Ron uses, I'm blanking on the name of the platform. Ecamm. The Ecamm, Ecamm Live. Uh, right. So they're both sort of online streaming platforms, but we're basically taking SoundCloud or YouTube or Slaps links. We're playing that audio through our audio gear. It's then going through the streaming platform. It's then going through YouTube and all of their compressors, and then it's going out to your browser or right. to your mobile device. So... There's a lot of layers to get through. So getting the best quality audio up front is a challenge and is something that I know you've worked on over the years. How have you kind of tackled that and, and got to the point now where you're playing people's tunes and it sounds really good? Well, first I had to really get my head around the way that a USB mixer works. Oh, yeah. You know, and it just, a lot of things aren't, obvious to me right so it did take a while to see how it interacted with the different the, the other parts of my sound system mm -hmm. and after a long journey with streaming different <laughs> platforms i found that ecamm for me was the mm -hmm. easiest for producing the best uh audio stereo yeah. audio Mm -hmm. and easily i could do i could have done the same thing with obs but i just could not get my head around that one just yeah. too much for me uh because ecam is similar you know you have scenes and all of those things but mm -hmm. It's like an Apple thing, you know, you set it up yeah. and then you don't know why it's working, but it's working. One of those deals, <laughs> you know, <laughs> they, they love that. They're saying, we don't need to tell you why. But then you, yeah. it took me a while to figure it out. So once I figured out what was up with Ecamm and a mixer, mm -hmm. it works fine. Yeah, It sounds, and, in, and you guys have heard my show. My biggest problem is I have a noisy studio. Yeah. And really, this Yamaha USB mixer is a little noisy, you know. Um, yeah. So, but it it is what it is for my show later on. I can do some whatever whatever you guys do. Yeah. <laughs> Run it through oh. like uh, three or four mixers. <laughs> no, it, it, and I think we, we were talking in the pre-show. There's a fine line between yeah, getting something that works and getting something that's perfect. And I think chasing right. perfection often results in things <laughs> getting worse and getting harder right. and getting more complex. Oh. And that's a hard thing to get your head around. So, yes. and I know, so for the. For instance, you're using Ecamm Live, I'm using uh, StreamYard, Mike over at Creative Source uses Restream, and Thomas Kreis uses OBS, and we all do very similar shows, but we right. all find a way to do it. And we all use different variations right. of USB mixes and audio interfaces and things. But Good point. Yeah, getting, around, getting your head around how the routing works, and, and one of the hardest things to do is just getting levels right, and uh, again, playing other people's music. 
it's very easy for me and Ron. We, we chat at the start here and we go, right, my audio level's here. Is yours about there? And we go, yep, okay. Well, then mm. we're going to be pretty set for the whole show. Once you bring in a third party, which could be anywhere at any volume level, that's where it starts getting a bit confusing. And you're mm. like, oh, okay, this, this song was mastered super hot and super punchy. And then this one's at like minus 18 dB on the master fader. And, and we, you need to try and find a way to, to boost the volume to get it up there. So it can be a challenge to do that through right. the streaming platform, as well as, you know, remembering to speak, remembering to interact with the live chat and remembering to, uh, you know, finish your show at some point. Otherwise, you could be here for right. 10 hours if you, if you just kept going and, and doing things. There is, you know, something to be said about the the amount of work that goes into uh, putting together a music show like that, right? Mm -hmm. Because even if you're getting your lists, you know, through Google Forms, you still have to go through them. Oh, yeah. And you still have to make the show. You're mm -hmm. not just going, oh, I'm going to, there. I have a, thousand songs i'm just going to go in and pl play whatever you i'm sh sure you make a show in advance right or at least a, oh yeah a good right yeah. so so there's your work and then you know making sure because if you're just doing a talk show it's different than you're yeah. constantly sharing your screen all the time and you got to yeah. remember to go off and on mute and all this, you know, <laughs> and you're like talking for three, right 37 seconds with no sound, a million things, you know? And um, so it's, uh, but luckily from uh, my experience that started with you back in GarageBand Users Group, I've been doing this, you know, yeah, we're about three to two and a half, three years, or you know, or so. Yeah. So and, it's uh, all I do, baby. I don't have another well, job now. <laughs> like, living the life of luxury over there, oh, drinking yeah. delicious Vietnamese beers, kicking back and loving life. Oh yeah, eat, eating <laughs> eating sandwiches, man. <laughs> Vietnamese sandwiches in oh, far, man, far and bon <laughs> me, and oh, it's all happening. <laughs> Love it. Uh, we'll move on to another topic in a moment. We've got a question here from uh, from Russ8889, who said, uh, do you think playing people's music... This is an interesting one, and we, we talked a little about promotion before, but this is really interesting. Do you think playing people's music makes people lazy to watch people's actual YouTube channels? Are, we, are you and I taking away from people actually going and exploring other people's YouTube or SoundCloud or slaps by playing their tunes? What do you think, Ron? No, I hope they're watching my channel more than those other channels. <laughs> no, no, no. That slipped the... Did I actually say that? I was no, just thinking didn't. that. You didn't. You just thought that really loudly. <laughs> no. Um, I, I don't think so because I put all the links down, you know, there in the master list. Master, master list. list. Master list. Master list. Master list. Master list. And I say it repeatedly that people should go. Mm. And then I have great mods putting up the links now, mm. you know, so that people can click during the show. Do people go and check them out? Maybe there are some people who might not go check out the songs after that, but I think there are also some people who might not originally have checked out the songs that do mm. check out the songs because yeah. of the show. That's so like, I think that's yeah. what I'm trying to do is, you know, make people's music yeah. in, in other people's ears. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I think our friend uh, Maze in the Music Lab, he has a really good point, which is that I think it makes us go to people's pages or sites. And I think mm -hmm. it, it's it's the difference between, and look, I know you and I have talked about this and I talk about this all the time. People are sick of me ranting on this, but the whole, hey, go and subscribe, go sub up every single musician yeah. that you ever hear, yeah, I think that's yeah, no. really dangerous because no. I know what it's like yeah. and you, you get fatigue. If you, if you watched your shows, my show, Thomas's show, Metalhead Hippie show, uh, Mike's show, over a creative source every week and subscribe to every single artist and every single song your feed would be so full of music some of which you really dig but some of which is not mm. your jam and that's right. totally cool you don't have to dig everything in fact we're doing something really wrong if you dig every single song that we play because it means we're not especially on my diversity. show 
I play what? some crazy play stuff on my then. show. You play it yeah. all. <laughs> and, right. I always say, Pete, and I, I've heard you say this, sub it up if you like it. Mm. I never oh, yeah. say go sub up everybody. Oh, I no. say often, at least once a show, sub it up, sub it up if you like it. But it's yeah. there in the master list if they want it, you know. So yeah, exactly, and that's that's the way it goes. And yeah, and, you know, my my show I do again even more different because I only play half the song. So <laughs> if people right. can, if people want to hear the whole song, they have well, to that's go a topic we didn't anyway. bring up, you know. But <laughs> I think uh, I think my people would kill me. They would exile me off my channel if I started playing half now. Oh, look, it's but, just but, too but, ingrained. Yeah. There's people who hate it and there's people who love it. Yeah. Like I always say mine's the Whitman sampler of shows. Well, that's and why some you, people just don't like it, but hey. That's, that's, why, that's why you cool. got to, you know, fifty thousand viewers on your on your shows and I got forty. <laughs> well yeah, it's, a, it's a, not quite bad. I got, it's it's a few hundred, but it's uh yeah, and again that's, that's overall, big, but, man. But that's that's not even live. That's that's on the replay. But yeah, look, it is. It, huh. It's a different sort of thing, and I think that's the key thing. Yeah, is that with so is. many different shows doing this, if we were doing, if we were all the same personality, playing the same music in the same format, doing the same stuff every week, why would people tune in? But there's people that will love what I do and don't really dig uh, on what Metalhead Hippie does. There's people that love yeah. you, Ron, and they don't want to watch my show because I, I, I play too short. They're like, I just get into that jam and then you stopped it halfway through. Uh -huh. You suck, Johns. And I'm like, hey, that's cool. I'm not going to not gonna. I have played over. partial songs and it yeah. works, man. Yeah, yeah. You know, in fact, do you actually choose when the song goes off or... Uh, no, it, usually just before the guitar solo. That's, uh, that's <laughs> people don't like it because I do it just before the guitar solo. That's when I fade people out. Oh, we've lost, we've lost Ron's audio again, I think. So we'll, <laughs> I've, 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 the background noise has just faded away for, for Ron there. So I can't, uh, I can't hear him. And uh, if anyone else can hear Ron, you don't have you coming on through there, Ron. You might have to jump out, man. You might have to jump out again if you can hear me because... Uh, you just went. You just went silent. While we wait for Ron, we'll say g'day to Derek Smith. Uh, yes, far every week is delicious. Uh, YouTube Analytics says yes on the. Uh, I'm assuming that's on the. Do do people go and check out your music? Yeah, absolutely. Hopefully they do. Uh, we'll uh, we'll answer this question in a moment when Ron comes back in here, uh, which is, do you guys prefer to listen to songs with or without video? An interesting one. Let's see if we've got Ron back and Ron with audio. There you I go. I can so. hear the yeah, I can man. hear the studio noise. Yeah, I'm sorry for messing up your stream continually. So that's all right. You, you, you seem to be on your webcam audio though. So you, I think you have that oh, problem man. with your sound setting. Just before someone jumps in and picks you up and says, "Hey, Ron's audio has just gone a little bit crunchy." Mm -hmm. so Here we'll, we go. Uh, we'll get Ron changed back to his mic, and then we'll uh, we'll continue on. It's all good. It's just the mm -hmm. challenges. It's just the ins and outs of. <laughs> of running a live show. Uh, when you do something live, anything can and will happen on a regular basis. So I don't okay, lose, I don't lose so any sleep over it. Right on. So <laughs> is it still crunchy? Yeah, it's still just coming through with a little extra background noise. I can hear you and it's coming through okay. So it's just, I can hear more of that uh, Saigon traffic noise and background noise. That, <laughs> <laughs> okay, that, well, that comes can I turn, if I turn it down, is it like okay then? It'll be fine. I think we'll go with it. I think we'll just ride it. As long as you can hear me, man, I can hear you, and we're all okay. good. Okay. What sounds do you reckon? Perfect to me. Hmm. Cool. What do you reckon about this one? Do you prefer to listen to songs with or without video? So, do you have a preference? If someone submits a song, do you actually care, or if it's got a video, does that make it better or worse, or is it kind of a line ball for you on that one? It's always good to have something to look at because it's a it's a video show right i mean if it was just radio only uh then only audio would be the best so i have to say even if you're looking at somebody's spotify page at least it's there's some kind of album art or something i'd like to have a good mix because different people prefer different platforms some people you know don't do a lot of videos but they do a lot of Spotify and I don't want to lose that good track or somebody who likes to watch my show who's a Spotify person so I want to have a good mix of them but uh, 
if I had a show with all YouTube, that would be cool. Yeah. <laughs> I must admit it's yeah when I, when I'm playing songs and and there's usually I'll usually open and finish with a YouTube song so I'll usually try to open with uh, something that's got a video and then close with something with a video so if you've ever wondered if you're producing amazing music and you've never opened or closed a show uh, on YML it's probably because you don't have a video and it's just again there's, there's people that will start watching and will click away if they don't have visual as well as mm -hmm. auditory stimulation so mm -hmm. yeah I think it's important to uh, to get something out there to start with um, Marcus Cannell uh, who says better stop playing guitar then because I turn the solos down and, and May Zen said it's brutal I don't do it on purpose but because I play one and a half to two minutes of a song and that's usually where the solo kind of kicks in. Uh, unfortunately, some solos uh, some solos are lost. But that's all right. I just say go and, go and check them out. Go jump in the description, get the link and go check them out. And uh, I happen to know for a fact that Marcus Cannell makes pretty awesome videos. So uh, I think uh, that's an yeah, incorrect statement there. He does a great, great, great job. So we were talking before a little bit about what you... What we play and what we don't play, and, and you know, both of us have to spend a lot of time. People think, oh, you just people submit songs and you just sit there. You're just a you're just a play button. You just go there and you play the song. But there is a little bit of a vetting process, and and we have different processes for this. What's what's your approach when it comes to what you will and won't play on your shows, Ron? You mean whether it's Ron ready or not? <laughs> <laughs> I do mean okay. whether it's well, right. How, how, how do people straight. get Ron ready? Mm. Like, tell us, tell us the secret to being Ron ready with your tracks. Okay, I think most people that get tracks on my show, they know, you know, what it is instinctively. It's just uh, no politics or religion. Right? But, you know, some amount of um, world events reality does creep in. And I'm not, yeah. you know, trying to hide my head in the sand, you know. But I don't want yeah. the show to turn into, you know, a religious battlefield or something like that. So, basically, no. No pornography. Yep. Um, I have had some videos that you know could maybe be called soft porn. There's no, there's no like nudity. <laughs> but um, cursing, uh, I will. But you know, I just had a track the other day that was I play rap on my show, and it was a rap song with just too many f bombs, just right in a row, mm -hmm. and you know. It was it was misogynistic, and that's another thing I won't play on my show is misogynistic songs. Mm -hmm. Um, now wartime images. Sometimes it depends on how they're presented. I do want to uh, warn people of triggers, you know, that might happen. Um, yeah. so for me now, it's just my brain <laughs> figuring out what I, you know, I. Everybody that watches my show is, is an adult. Yeah. I don't think I ever have known or heard of in the child watching my show. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, I, I keep it um, professional. But I also, uh, you know, I will play some things that other folks might not because my audience is kind of small right now. I could be considered underground still. <laughs> Where I might not play Pirate this if I turn into <laughs> Howard Stern in five years, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Look, and it's it is cool, and I think I, I love the fact that we can play what is not mainstream. We can choose to play things that wouldn't get played on mainstream radio. And Absolutely. I think that's super cool. And, and uh, look, my my views are different but similar so i'm kind of the same I'm definitely anything that preaches hate or violence against anyone mm. for any reason i don't dig and the same thing like when you talk about religion and politics anything that tells other people what they should do or should think uh i don't dig it either so basically mm. I, I put the filter over it which is that if you are if you're singing about something that's pa you're passionate about 
that is that's in your space that you want to send a message about how you feel that's one thing if you're telling if you're again if you're preaching hate if you're saying preaching hate or violence against anyone or if you're telling other people what to do and look i do play some religious songs you know it's a slippery slope and so i do play some political songs but it's the difference between everyone must be left wing right wing middle wing or everyone must be christian buddhist or or muslim versus I love this particular thing and it, this thing gives me joy. That's kind of the, the, the filter I put across it. But I totally respect that different people have different rules. And I think we, we were talking before that as much as we'd like to say, hey, it's, you know, it's freedom of speech, it's a democracy, the platforms we use don't think that way. And sometimes you know, we don't have to think that way because uh, it's not a democracy, it's a ronocracy and a pedocracy. Right, and I tell people, <laughs> when I get an email... You know, whether it's some kind of a, uh, I'm with you on no hate and violence. Absolutely mm. not, ever. Yeah. But, um, you know, when I get a track that's religious or uh, too political for my show, then I just mm. answer the person and I tell them straight up, you know, thanks, you know, but it's a great song, great track, but I, I won't, won't play it because of this. And then I say, but Pete will play it, so you go over there. <laughs> <laughs> that's right and, and, and then when Jay in, has... in a way Pete that's kind of true because people don't only have one option it's true and uh, we discussed this very point just before the show that when Jade has a Kindercore FMC she knows that Ron and probably Tom will play it myself and Metalhead Hippie probably won't so uh, yeah it's horses for courses like different different things for different platforms as well uh, what have we got we've got about 15 minutes left here Ron we've got a question from Russ and uh, Russ says, uh, ah, are you are both blown away with the talent in this community? I don't know if Russ is asking that because I think I say that every week. I think that's just like almost my catch cry on Your Music Live that every week I'm like, I just can't believe how talented, how, there are so many people with such a high level of skill and talent and the ability to create music that I really dig that it's, it makes my job an absolute breeze to just play cool music. What what do you think in terms of that? Are you are you surprised by how many people there are out there that are making great music? Yeah. I mean, more and more because um, I've been involved with it for a few years, but on a smaller scale. And then when you kind of get out here in the big pond to see how many people and how many different like subgroups of it there <laughs> are or people who yeah. are doing it independently and there is no link together but mm. then pe members start to cross pollinate and things like that uh i'm surprised and and when you look at a show like yours where you might have you know dozens and dozens of people watching it at once and and then uh one like mine it's a lot smaller but even that i can't keep up with yeah. all of the talent just to run a small <laughs> show you know yeah. seriously so i don't know how in the heck you do it but um yeah, it's Google Forms. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, yeah, that, that, that's all there is. And it is it is hard. Like, I have a backlog to the point where about every month or two, well, about, well, about due for one, I just do an extra show because I, I try to do a two-hour show every week and then I just get to the point where I'm like, look, the backlog is too big. I have to make a decision here and I have to uh, oh. reduce, I have to just get some of these played. And look, I could I could start saying no. And look, I, again, I, I do have to be a little bit of editorial, I guess, and selective about what I play on the show because, yeah, some things aren't appropriate and some things, look, it's, I'm not, not that they're not up to the quality, but I think the more you do it, it there, there are some folks that I'll actually go back to. Like you said before, when you have that conversation with them, I'll say, hey, I can see that you put a lot of effort into this one. Um, what's a nice way to say, have another crack at this and then come back to me in, 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 a, in a month or two? Like that might sound super harsh, but at the same time, I want to make sure that they're putting their best foot forward. And some people, some people are super ready and they wait too long. Like they, 
I hear their music and they're like, no, 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 I'm not ready for that to be played live on the on the show because they just think that, oh, no, no one else is going to like this. And they are blown away when people are like, oh, my God, people like my music. And then there's some people, and I always say this, that unfortunately the more bravado they have, the more, and you know, we have a bit of a joke on my show that it's like, play my fire beat because we have people that come on the show and instead of submitting, instead of reading the comments, instead of reading the description, instead of engaging with the community, they come in, play my fire beat, play this song by this person, and they spam, spam, spam the chat, and then they go away. And sometimes I do go back and I go find those songs and I listen to them. And uh, between you and me, Ron, and the, the people listening to this, not very good. They're not, not mm. that fire. So um, yeah, I think man. sometimes there's a disconnect. Some of the most amazing, talented people seem to have the lower level of confidence. And people that are coming out there telling you that they're the best thing and their beat so fire, they've got some work to do. do. Do you find that? Have you had those experiences yet with the, uh, the spam and the, the folks coming into your show? Hmm... There are people, even in the community, but there are just like these random people now and then who will pop in and obviously they don't want to listen to anyone else's music. They just want theirs to be heard. Yeah, and it's yeah. so, so obvious to everyone, right? But it's not that much. And the people who are obviously spamming, I'll just kick them out. <laughs> and then like people who are kind of like are more self-centered because sometimes artists don't realize and people have different like personality traits right so i try not to judge until the they start to be disruptive or something like that you just yeah. i just try to um you know roll with it man uh, but yeah. let me say this i like reject more songs for not being run ready because mm. of like the mix is just you know, you really don't want to go with this. I, it's not good enough for the show, man. And I don't say that. But I mean, at some point, some new users or they, you know, uh, whatever it is, you still have to have a show, <laughs> right? I mean, if it's mm -hmm. not if it's not playable, if it does, if it's not at least sub radio ready, you know. Yeah. It has to have yeah. a beginning, a middle, and an end, and be, have a decent <laughs> mix. You know, or I'll tell them, hey, buddy, you know, or I'll just, like, don't say anything. And see. <laughs> but, you know, those people don't tend to, you know, I never see them, you know, because. Yeah. And, and yeah, and you're right. It's, it's the people that come in and, and people are saying in the chat here that it's the, the folks that come in and they will do that. They'll come in for that one time. They want their song yeah. played. They want to listen to their song and then they move on anyway. So it's one of those things that uh, you, if, you, if you kind of ignore those things, they don't become a problem anymore because the people aren't around to cause a problem. And yeah, I know when people are, are wanting me to play their music and it's not quite there and then they come back to me with another me. That's actually the best thing because it means that they're actually trying. When people just right. come and they throw a song at me and I'm like, actually, this has way too many F-bombs to be played. They, and they just leave or actually your mix is like just really need some work on this it's just well, overpowering that 808 is just overpowering go right. away and take a look I had a guy who wrote a song about what Ukraine and the name of it was F U Russian Warship yeah. and I thought okay whatever so probably not that bad and I was considering playing it, depending on what it was, right? But then I went in there, and there was, like, so many F-bombs. It was like he sampled the F-bombs. It was, like, the whole yeah. thing. I'm like, oh, man. So, you know. Yeah, I, it makes sense. I would play it, but I'm not. So this guy went back. He goes, well, here's a clean version. And it just said, I forgot what it ended up saying. <laughs> so it proved to me that yeah. it was worth it to him to go that extra mile to uh, right get his music out there on ron totally. ready totally gotta be ron <laughs> ready uh what have we got we've got seven minutes left we've got a couple more topics to jump through here real quick we've got a couple of questions here uh th there is a yml this week uh, ingo so it is uh, it is set up uh it, it is a day later now so we're doing ymls on sunday which i know is easter sunday for some folks but you know what after you've had you know a fill of chocolate eggs and lunch and a few beers 
tune in for YML. We'll be doing the show. So uh, it's Monday morning for me because Rod and I live in the future. So it's Thursday night for us here now. And uh, the YML show will be Monday morning, which will be Sunday afternoon or evening for you folks. Uh, did you, a uh, great question for Gregory O'Sullivan, did you come to some decision about filtering out cover songs to reduce your backlog? Yeah, so I was... I was actually considering this, and this is a good question for you, Ron. So um, I've had some people give me some feedback that they don't love the fact that there is cover songs as well as original songs played on my shows. How do you manage cover songs? Do you mix them all in? Do you care if it's an original songwriting or if it's a cover song? Right now, I let them all in. Yeah. I don't uh, discourage covers. You know... Um, so that's the answer to that. I also, though, I have not started dealing with the all my shows get copyright hits. Every, every one. I haven't had yeah. any global mm. strikes or anything or any <laughs> strikes. But but yeah. I mean, so I'm not going to be able to make any money off those, which is something mm. that we did not discuss or mm. put in our, our topics list. But we didn't. You, it's really difficult unless you have a sponsorship <clears throat> to... Uh, monetize a show that yeah. has all these copyright hits even either from people's mm. content ID on their own song that they wrote right their original yeah. or from somebody's cover of uh, ZZ Top's Tush which I had the <laughs> other day <laughs> yeah and, and so look, I just did, yeah go ahead so yeah we, we did have this we had the copyright and content ID issue as one of the things to chat about but yeah oh, in right. terms of monetization you're right and, uh, and i know you're working towards it at the moment because for those that don't know on youtube you need a thousand subscribers and four thousand hours within a 12-month period of watch time to uh, join the youtube partner program and what you can do then is when you release a video there'll be ads played so if you're watching this video on the replay i'm really sorry you probably saw an ad at the start and guess what you're probably going to watch one at the end as well i try not to cram <laughs> a lot of youtubers will put like an ad every five minutes and you'll be like oh i don't watch your show sometimes because in vietnam i think you can't have the ad for YouTube, you'll be playing a tune and then an ad will pop up like after the tune, you'll be like, oh, gotta, gotta, gotta drop the volume there. So those ads that are played on, on people's YouTube videos are because they're part of the YouTube Partner Program. Now, if you are playing other people's music, whether it be their own music that they've submitted to say through DistroKid or through TuneCore or through uh, CD Baby, and they've added Content ID, which is the YouTube copyright system, yeah, we get a claim every single time. And Ron, it's probably the same for you, but I just wait for that email afterwards and it's like, do, 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 do. It's like five, six, seven, eight, eight different songs that I've played in that show that have all got copyright claim. Now, we don't get in trouble for those. Copyright claims just mean that if you're monetizing that stream, which I do on this channel because I am part of the partner program, then any of that money that I make goes back to the artists whose music I've played. So I make exactly zero dollars in ad revenue mm. from every episode of Your Music Live. But I'm lucky enough to have the awesome distro kid as a sponsor of that show. Mm. So I can do it every week <laughs> because I do this full time as a job. This is my livelihood. It's important that I can actually have some revenue coming in so that I can keep promoting independent music. But it is really tough. I know that for, for yourself and for Thomas Christ and for Metalhead Hippie and others that are running these shows, it can be a challenge. How, how do you find that? Or, or do you have, have you got plans for the future around that sort of thing? So right now I'm below the radar is the yeah. way I see it. And though I guess maybe if I made all of my videos, because I got a hundred and something videos up there now, you know, go went back and disputed them all and cleaned them all up and see which ones I could uh, monetize later. Probably if I had enough time, but I just I don't see myself doing that. So what I'm looking at is if I ever get to a thousand, and then I have a chance to do something else. Because right now, I am living off uh, donations and Teespring. <laughs> t-shirts man <laughs> which is fine for me right now that's exactly where yeah. i should be i mean I, i'm not trying to rush my growth but at some yeah. point if i get a thousand i might go well i'm gonna do more talk shows i don't know mm. yeah you know and yeah, then and just look, go from there uh, and look, that's 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 exactly where this show came out of because this is a show that i can run an ad or two on and hopefully it's enjoyable because i get to chat to cool people about these sort of topics so yeah there are options and i think once you build that community and once you have 
the ability to do that, then yeah, there's, there's always options there for you. But uh, yeah, it is something that people don't think about, but navigating around the copyright and the content stuff. And like you say, if, if we played, uh, the problem with covers, like co I, I love covers, just just quietly. I mean, we've got Ingo here from Black Covers, uh, who, who uh, he said, yeah, uh, no covers would be sad, just speaking for myself, right? Exactly. Uh, and I actually love cover songs and I would continue playing them. I'm just deciding whether I do either a separate covers show. At the moment, I'm just grouping them together in the show in one chunk. Um, but the problem with covers, Ingo does all of his own work. So he completely hand, uh, hand codes all of his instrumentation and does all the arrangement and everything. The problem is if people are doing cover songs where they're using any part of the original audio, that's where you go from content ID and copyright claims to copyright strikes. And as soon as you're playing, if you're playing a version of, say, you're doing an Eagles, you're playing a version of Hotel California, and you use that original guitar in there or you use any Don Henley vocals in there, yeah, you better believe you're getting a copyright strike like that, and that's where you can get your stuff taken. That's what Facebook had the problem with. If they would do that on covers, they would do that on people's original songs, they would take you down in a flash, like you talked about earlier, whereas YouTube will only do that with some of these other artists. Oh no, we've lost we've lost Rock and Ronnie. <laughs> you might have to do one more jump out and jump back in, man, because we've lost your audio again. That's all good. This is the good thing. This is the fun of doing a live show. We are coming up towards the end of the live show. I'm just going to see if we have anything that we were going to talk about that we haven't had a chance to talk about here. I think we've covered pretty much everything here. The only thing left that we were going to cover here, Ron, ironically was chatter versus music so how much of your show should be talking and how much should be music because you and i can both talk quite a bit and the fact that we're at the one hour mark now and we have to round out the show i think tells you that it's a bit of an ongoing challenge for you and i if you got a a one minute or two minute sort of a soliloquy you wanted to throw out before we finish about how you balance how much you need to chat and interact with the folks who are here live versus playing the music so my shows are two hours is by you know rule of thumb so yeah. i currently play to my live audience so you know they're the ones who get primor prior primordial priority on the master list so if you're in the stream and you're on the master list then i try to play all of those people yeah now Every song gets some type of an introduction. And I try to, you know, in two hours, play everybody in the stream. So mm -hmm. sometimes I have to compress my talking, <laughs> my commentary. And sometimes I go a little over, you know, I, I don't yeah. want to do that to my mods because they have other stuff to do, you know, and me yeah. too, right? I gotta make logos. If I if I had, no, I would let make logos all freaking day, man. <laughs> Love it. Okay. Anyhow, so it it depends, but I like to talk. And now I've been doing you know a few live songs on the show too, so that takes up time. But um, uh, I think it's a balance. You know, you're always gonna yeah. see me talk a bit if you watch one of my shows. Is that There's an a, answer? I don't know. <laughs> that is a great answer. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Australian says I like it when you give info about the songs, uh, artists as well as the music. Um, yeah, and, and I, I, we have a bit of a running joke because I do a couple of shows, and at the moment, it's uh, with the current time changes. It's Garage Band Weekly that runs into one of Ron's Ron Ready shows, oh, and yeah. I always say at the end of that, all right, folks, go over to Ron's show. Don't worry, uh, we, we've gone ten minutes over, but you probably haven't missed the first song because Ron's probably still chatting and saying hello to the folks that are there live. So. You haven't missed anything. Get on over there now. So, uh, yeah, it's a it's, it's a bit of a running joke, but it's it's cool because I think oh, I love people it love it because because usually I was at whatever number I was, so like twenty five usually, mm. and then when we started overlapping, I'd say I'd start off with like, <laughs> well, I got like twenty two or twenty, and then but then when your show stopped. <laughs> <laughs> went out like it was like school's out for summer baby and i was like up in the upper 30s you know so i'm like hey i'll overlap with pete show anytime there you go <laughs> well, that, yeah 
And look, it is, it's true because uh, you'd think that, yeah, pe- people have often said they're like, oh, like, y- you guys must not like that there's so many other people doing similar shows. I'm like, you're kidding. We love it because, you know, it gives people the ability. You can binge it. You can, you can sit down and some days you can watch Miss Jade and then me and mm-hmm. then you and then Metalhead Hippie. You can spend eight to ten hours of just kicking back some watching people, live shows. There are people who really dig this scene, man. Yeah. You yeah. know, they're, they're like yeah. hanging around everywhere. And, uh, you know, that's uh, it's my bread and butter. Totally. <laughs> well, we, we're, we're not going into anyone's show tonight because I don't think Mike's doing his Fix My Mix tonight uh, as he did last week. So, uh, well, we, we have all the time in the world except that uh, I've got to go to bed because um, it's, it's late here in Australia. It's nearly 9.30 and I'm an old man, so i got to get myself an early night because it is uh, a okay, good Friday cool, here. Man. Oh, here, right and, on. Uh, so, good, yeah. good Friday Happy. is a big family day here. My wife's Italian, right. and we do a big Good Friday oh, thing. Yeah. So that'll be tomorrow. But good I did food, want to mention yeah. oh, a lot of food, a lot of food. There's a couple of things I do want to mention. One involves you, and one involves our friends uh, Jade Star ah, and yes. Russ8889, a.k.a. the Delicate Giant. So there's the first thing you've got to do. Look, I'll throw these in the chat. I'll make it easy for you. We're all about making things easy. I'll throw this in the chat here. This is uh, first up, <clears throat> The Delicate Giants, their new album, Moon World, works. And there's a big launch party happening over on Jade Star's channel. So you can join that one. And then uh, a couple of my favourite people here. We've got Ron Ward and out of New Zealand, Mr. Glenn Clark. How'd you swing that, getting Glenn Clark on your show, my friend? That's, that's oh, a good this deal. Has been, yeah, it's been brewing for a while, Pete. Uh, <laughs> Glenn and I have wanted to do this for the longest time. And now he's free after, you know, uh, yeah. a lot of busy things on his side. He's a he's a theater director, right? He yes. directs he directs plays. And so he was busy doing that and some other stuff and so finally he goes, Hey man, let's do it. So uh it there you go. It's an edition of Indie Live and we will be playing the master list. But uh, on the, the second half, list. yes. Who here sounds creepy like, uh, <laughs> like you know the Adams family? But um, <laughs> the first half of the show, we're gonna play some of Glenn's songs of his That's choosing, and then cool. let him talk about the songs, right? And I might chat him up a little bit, and then the second half of the show will be a normal. Masterless show, right? So come and check it out. Love it. Do that and uh, check out all the shows over on Run's channel. Check out Saigon Slick and the Boston Bard. There is a whole lot going on over there. If you haven't heard Glenn Clark's music, go and check it out. He's uh, an artist. He uses GarageBand out of New Zealand. He's released entire albums and like yeah. he's a super creative dude. His his videos. If you're playing some Glenn Clark music wait till you see some of these videos he puts so much effort he's a truly uh, a creative all-rounder in terms of the production he makes his own props he does his own video work and yeah just just a, a hands down and a really nice dude too like some he has right. every right to be super snobby and super up himself but he's one of the most down to earth and nicest guys you're ever going to meet right so. and well maybe after uh, you know his next album he'll start being uh, snobby but <laughs> He has an album coming out right away. Oh, very cool. And uh, I have the album art for it. I'm going to show it on the show. And he's one of, evidently, the last song for that album he's doing the video for right now. And hopefully I'm going to be able to premiere it on the show if he finishes it. Right? So make sure you show up Get it done, mate. (laughs) Don't watch this show. If you're watching this show, you're doing the wrong thing. Get back to work. All right. Uh, Thank you, everyone, who's been here live. Thank you all for hanging out with us. If you weren't here live, you're on the replay. Throw your comments down below. Myself and Ron will be hanging out. Like Ron, Ron's got a few hours. It's early for him. He'll go drink some some lovely Vietnamese beer, have a bun me, and be able to answer any of the comments that you got down there. Oh, there we go. There you go. Oh, he's hitting the he's hitting the Vietnamese vino. wine. Oh yeah. They have local about. vineyards here. Oh, not that I've been drinking that during the show. And then uh, this there was just a cup of tea, that's for sure. All right, Absolutely. everyone, thanks for being here. As we say at the end of every show, be kind to yourself, folks. Be kind to others. Keep creating. Thank you to my guest, Rockin' Ronnie Ward. We'll see you next time on The Creator Town Hall. Bye.